Good morning. The title of this talk is uh, Building a Sleepy Map Library in Pure Elm. So I put parentheses about, around the library because I'm showing you how to build a Sleepy Map library in Pure Elm, uh, a Sleepy Map in Pure Elm and using the library I built. So my name is Jonas. I uh, am Clefative on the Elm Slack, GitHub, and uh, uh, Twitter. I work at ICE where we mainly build native mobile uh, apps and uh, both both as an agency and we have our own apps in the store. And those apps uh, mainly have a strong map-related background. I started using AIM in version 15. Um, and for me, it was important to have the virtual DOM-based uh, HTML rendering. And, and yeah, as mentioned, I created AIM Search. It's uh, like a Google for, for AIM. And it's linked as fancy search from the package website. So what motivated me to build a uh, sleepy map library in AIM? Um, so we have this app called Rudel. It lets you anonymously share locations between friends. Uh, it's a native app for iOS and Android. And uh, it also has a companion web viewer. So you have your list of friends on the site, and um, they are driving through uh, St. Louis. And you can just click on the people, follow those, and um, yeah, you can just have this public URL and share it and um, see it. So this app is, this site is written in AIM. So AIM is this functional declarative data-driven language. And um, I think we all like it. It's, it's cool. This site is written in Leaflet. It's a JS-based sleepy map library. It's object-oriented, uh, imperative, but it's, it's also cool. So you can use it to create sleepy maps. Both sides communicate via ports, and ports are this communication mechanism, mechanism aimed for, for peaceful communication between JavaScript and, and uh, AIM. But um, both worlds, the different paradigms, uh, the functional and object-oriented, uh, when you talk to between those uh, parts, um, you often have obstacles. So you have like your list of people in AIM and your, your markers on the map and you have to duplicate the state and sync it and you have to wrap a, the large map IPA and then you have to have, do data diffing and apply patches when, you, when data changes and you want to react, uh, when you want to react, uh, change uh, the map. So in a different project, I, I tried to minimize the state between uh, JavaScript and AIM and I did this by only using a map uh, base layer and um, rendering markers and things on top of the map in AIM. For that, I had to re-implement um, projections uh, that you get for free when you use the Sleepy Map Library. And then I thought, ah, now I've implemented the projections. Maybe I should just implement a Sleepy Map Library. And um, so yeah, I started building a Sleepy Map Library in pure AIM. This is how it looks like. So it's just a Sleepy Map. Everybody should know it. So we can move around, pan around. It's animated. And um, there's a GeoJSON layer. You have different markers and a pop-up. And it's called Slippery Slope. Uh, it's uh, called Slippery Slope because it's uh, initial beta version at the moment. The code is at uh, Cluffedly Slippery Slope. I wanted to publish it uh, on the AIM package website, but it's, it's, uh, there are still some, some things I want to, to, to improve. So it will be there soonish. And uh, when it's stable and uh, feature complete and stuff like that, um, I want to move it to, to a, a special GitHub organization to, to um, support the community around it because Sleepy Maps, uh, they want to be, everybody wants to use them differently and there, there's a good, um, people can write plugins and uh, move them to, to AIM Maps. So how do you get started? Um, I made uh, two special modules to, to get started quickly. And uh, you just import the static sleepy map module. And uh, you have everything you need in there to create a map. Sorry about the picture. Uh, they, they will get better soon. Um, so you just create a map with a given size at a given location and a zoom level. And uh, you add uh, a tight base layer. You can also uh, create a map around a given bounds. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mostly the same. But uh, just the base layer is, is, is boring, so you usually want to create, uh, add um, data layers, so like the GeoJSON layer. And uh, the GeoJSON is from the M 
uh, and GeoJSON library it just passes a GeoJSON string into its own type and uh, the sleepy map library renders it. You can add markers, uh, you just pr uh, give a list of locations and it uh, renders the markers on the map and you cr can create pop-up layers and all those layers, they are implemented in uh, different modules, but the sleepy map static module exposes, uh, re-exposes so those layers in a standard default configuration. But yeah, a static map is uh, often not what you want, what you need. It's good to get started and to, to get a feeling what you can do, but uh, usually you want an interactive map and there's this interactive map module. And um, you usually have your AMP program and um, you, when you integrate a, a component uh, into your AMP program, there's always this uh, little bit of code you have to do. And um, you have to fill in the, the uh, functions, uh, the, the HMA program, uh, expect. So you just uh, grab the state from the model and uh, to, uh, from the map and integrate it with, the, uh, with your model and you init initialize this. Uh, in the interactive uh, module, the map around function just creates a state. Before in the static module, it created a, a complete view. Uh, to integrate your updates, you have to wrap the map message into your own message type and uh, you have to uh, set up the, the update so that uh, the aim one time can call map.update for you. Um, you have to set up a subscription as well because uh, there's keyboard interactions and uh, subscriptions for, for uh, dragging. And uh, then you provide a config, you uh, provide the size and the message and this uh, sets up the interaction. Um, and the nice thing, the view function is, is uh, the same. So you can keep all your layers you, you, you have implemented in your static module, you can just keep those. So in, yeah, it looks like that. This is uh, what we have now. Um, but at the moment the map is um, self-contained. So uh, you usually want to, to communicate with your uh, parent app. And uh, you can pattern match on exposed child messages. So, so I'm not exposing my messages and this is, you usually shouldn't do that. Um, you shouldn't call uh, update messages, update functions uh, by yourself. It's, those should all be called by, by the M one time. There's the out message pattern to, to uh, do parent-child communication. Uh, so you, you um, return a third message uh, in, your, in your tuple and you can pattern match on this uh, too. And this communicates uh, what the component can do, will do, and uh, you can react on this. On, on this. Or many libraries, um, they, they you have to inject messages into their context. So I, I did, a little, did this a little bit different. So what, this is what um, I'm going to implement. Um, this is a map, so you can select uh, points of interest, and the map will fit to the bounds, and you can do this on the uh, side or you can just, uh, you can click to create markers and you can just click on a marker to, to fit the bounds and yeah, how is this implemented? Um, so I did this with, with events, so you have to call the view with events uh, special function and it expects a, a list of events and it's mainly like a normal uh, event uh, set up in AIM but uh, when you create the, the uh, Decoder, the library gives you the point, the pixel position and the location where, where, you, where the event happened because you usually are interested in, in that and you can create your decoder from there. So in this case, we have an add poi uh, message and um, you create a custom poi at a given location. I forgot to show this. Yeah, no, I showed it. So uh, here, this is the location and you usually want to do a geocoding request uh, to, to get the nice name. Um, how can you update the, the map from, from, out, from the outside, from your app? And um, yeah, you have like your, your points and you want to, to toggle the selected by name. And uh, when this happens, you want to update the, the bounds of the map. And there are many, many functions in the uh, library that uh, take a map, take some data and return a new map. So you don't have to call the map update function but there are special functions for, for the different needs you, you, you want to, uh, to have. And uh, often you, you want to, to 
control the map from the inside. So when you click on a marker, you want something to happen. And uh, here you now uh, import a special uh, marker module. And um, so you can customize it. And uh, here you just say that you want an individ individual marker for each POI and you grab the location. You always want the same icon. And on click, you uh, grab the name from the POI and um, put it into, into the target selected message. So the communication, it's, it's, there's no more translation happening. It's, it's, everything is an aim, and it's, it's, it's working nice. So, but uh, most of the time, uh, so I'm, there are many different layers uh, in, in the library, but most of the time when you build uh, a sleepy map, you have uh, your own ideas how you want to display the data. And um, so the map needs to be extensible. And this is what, what you usually expect from a sleepy map library uh, when, you, when you have used um, JavaScript-based sleepy map libraries. There are many, many plugins for the different libraries. So the view function of the map, it, takes, expects a config and a state and a list of layers. So everything that's visible on a map is, is, is a layer. The, the map itself is just a container that sets, sets up uh, event handlers for the interactions. But everything that's visible is, is a layer. Uh, so the base layer, the type base layer, or even the zoom controls, it's, it's technically, it's, it's a layer. So you have to, to uh, know how to create layers to make the map uh, extensible. And there's only one public layer API, and the map library itself uses the public API. So the bundled core layers are not special. Um, and so I'm eating my own dog food, uh, so I know that uh, I can create any, any layers I, I, I want. But to create layers, you have to know what layers are. And layers, uh, they just contain a pane for, this is for ordering of, of the different layers so that the base is always uh, at the bottom and that markers are on top of GeoJSON and that the zoom controls are always at the top top. And they contain, uh, con uh, contain attribution because attributing things in, in mapping libraries is really important. But the most important thing is a map contains uh, a render function and this is a function that expects a map. This is a new type I'm going to explain and returns an HTML message. So it's just like, like uh, when you create your normal view function, it's an HTML, HTML message with children. And the map message, it's, uh, it's a combination of the map config and the map state and calculated properties and functions because every layer, they usually want to do kind of the Thing. They want to show geolocated data in pixel space, and for that you have to, to have like a projection function, and this function always uh, depends on, on the current state of, of the map, and, and layers also need to know like the bounding box of the map to filter data they don't want to display. They need to know the size of the map, and um, the map type uh, wraps the state and the config, and the derived properties in, in one park type and gives you access to, to, to all the data you, you need uh, when you build your custom layers. Uh, just a small detour, so you saw state and config all the time, and when you create your own component uh, or view package, you, one goal is to, to uh, minimize the state you own. And um, then you have to think, what, what do I need? What kind of state do I need? Because in Elm, you can only render what's in your model or what's, what's uh, um, uh, constant. And uh, to render a map, you need the location, a zoom level, and, and the size. And this is all you need to, to cre cre create a, a map. And, um, but uh, I didn't put the size in, 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 the, con in the model. Because I have this rule of thumb, don't own what you don't control, and I decided that, change, I, I, that the map shouldn't be able to change the size. This is more uh, a concern of the wrapping app because it influences uh, everything. And so the state only contains the location and the zoom level, and um, some interactions are stateful and transitions are stateful, so I have to uh, put those in, in the state as well. And the config contains size, it contains messages to, to set up the interactions with the, in your update and uh, static settings like the minimum zoom level, maximum zoom level, 
the, the uh, zoom steps when you zoom, if, uh, if you want to have like fractional zooming, stuff like that, it's all contained in the config. So, um, how do you create layers? Um, usually, you just write some kind of render function, and the render function expects a map and returns an HTML. And um, yeah, you just return some HTML in there. I'm going to show you uh, different layer examples um, to, to make this more clear. And when you create, this is just a render function, and when you create a layer, you start with a layer config, and the layer config just says on which pane you want the, the, the layer to show. So in this case, we are uh, creating a new control layer that's always rendered on the top. And you just uh, uh, give it uh, the render function, and then you have a layer. And uh, the view, the main view function, just goes through the list of the layers you, you, you have provided and sorts those by, by pane, creates uh, the map message um, for one map message for, for every layer so that the layers um, all uh, have access to, to the same data at, at the same time. Um, so one example of a custom layer is a heat map layer of this um, experiment, experimental SVG heat map. Uh, that's map independent, and I want to, to create a, 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 a layer, a map layer from this. Uh, so I'm, I'm just importing the heat map uh, module and some other modules, um, mainly the layer module and the map module, and I'm writing my render function. This is where you usually start, and um, in this case, I only want to, to create a heat map from, from a list of locations. Um, and in the render function, I have access to the map. I grab the size of the map. Uh, I grab the projection. It's called a location to screen port because it yeah, returns a screen port for a given location. And uh, then I can use this uh, function to transform the locations into the data the heat map uh, module expects. And then I'm just calling the heat map view function uh, with, the, with the data and it uh, yeah, and this is now an overlay layer, so it's, uh, it's uh, above the base layers. And uh, yeah, so this is how it looks like, and I can, it's not super fast, but those are 10,000 points when it's in SVG, so it's, 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 it's okay. And uh, yeah. <laughs> One, other nice example, so I flew in from, from uh, Cologne yesterday and um, there's this, uh, a great circle uh, arc I wanted to, to write, so I, I saw the screen in, in the airplane where, where you see where you, are, where you are flying and I thought, ah, I should implement this. And um, this is a nice example, so now I'm, I'm grabbing a, extending a existing layer, so the, the, in the Sleepy Map library, the different layers um, build on top of each other. So I have like abstract um, layers and for, for markers or tiles, and then I can uh, just create specialized layers on top of it. And in this case, uh, I'm extending the GeoJSON layer, and um, so now my render function doesn't expect a map and returns HTML, it just uh, takes a start and an end uh, location, and it returns GeoJSON, so I'm creating the GeoJSON on demand. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I have this location between add function and uh, this uh, gives you a new location at a point uh, between those uh, uh, function on the grid circle. And um, I'm doing this for every uh, for in 100 steps and I'm just returning this uh, geometry. And the layer is now a GeoJSON layer and I just provide, give it the, the polyline and it looks like this. So I flew from Cologne to Charlotte, and when you zoom in, you should be able to see like a corner somewhere, but yeah, I'm not seeing, seeing it. But yeah, this is how you implement custom layers. So a slippery slope, um, what I need is a logo and a proper name, and uh, AIM made refactoring nice, it made modeling nice, and it focuses you to, to think about the important things like nice path into your library, documentation, uh, and things like that. Some things are really hard in AIM, like there's, at the moment there's no touch, intake, touch subscription library, so I had to do some, some trickery stuff to not lose uh, the touch, uh, touch event when, when panning. 
And for example, things that are easy in, in, in JavaScript uh, are hard in AIM, so like uh, tracking the loading set of image types is, is really hard. Uh, so yeah, that's the sleepy map. You can soon just uh, uh, install it with the, via the package website. At the moment, you have to manually do it. There are ways to do that. Um, yeah, use it, tell me what you think, and uh, the goal is to create custom layers for you, and uh, I want to build a community, so yeah, just help me kickstart the community. That's it. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention, so the slides are implemented as a sleepy map library, so uh, as a sleepy map, so um, yeah. Again, just zoom in.